From UFOs to ghosts and psychic powers, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now and learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy are two of the most popular presidents in U.S. history. They were also both assassinated. Lincoln was shot in Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. on April 14, 1865, by an actor named John Wilkes Booth. On November 22, 1963, Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. While each of these tragic events altered the course of the nation, political assassinations are not an uncommon occurrence throughout the world. These deaths may be the inevitable result of a power shift, a coup d'etat, or scapegoating. But to some conspiracy theorists, the deaths of Lincoln and Kennedy aren't just disturbing, they are related. Here's where it gets crazy. Some conspiracy theorists believe that financial interest arranged for the assassination of these presidents. In Kennedy's case, they argue that he was murdered because of Executive Order 11110 from June 4, 1963, which authorized the U.S. Treasury to issue silver certificates and to coin standard silver dollars. To these conspiracists, the central issue here is that Kennedy was taking the power of creating cash from the Federal Reserve, which charges interest to the government when it issues currency. In Lincoln's case, David W. Balsiger and Charles E. Sellier Jr. argue that he was shot, at least partially, because of disagreements with international banking interest over the financing of the Civil War. Lincoln, allegedly rejecting the high interest rates set by the Bank of England and other financiers, worked with Congress to authorize the printing of greenbacks to pay for the war effort. Ultimately, according to these conspiracies, two U.S. presidents were killed for financial reasons as much as ideological differences. But could this actually be true? It is true that private financial entities have ousted world leaders in the past. In 1893, a group of businessmen and property owners banded together to create the Committee for Safety and overthrow the Hawaiian monarchy, eventually annexing the nation into the United States. Further examples may be seen in Guatemala and Honduras, where the United Fruit Company wielded deadly power with political and occasionally military support from the U.S. These countries were not annexed politically, but United Fruit used its influence to determine the country's leaders. In Economic Hitman, John Perkins claims that he was hired by the firm known as Chas T. Maine to trap poor countries in debt, using underhanded methods to strong-arm these nations into privatizing resources and following the commands of the developed world. Yet undue corruption is not the same thing as assassination, and skeptics are also quick to point out several inconsistencies in these theories. In both cases, numerous factions wanted the president out of the picture. There is no solid proof connecting the issuance of greenbacks or Kennedy dollars to their assassinations. While it is true that questions remain regarding both murders, these events have become part of American folklore, and with time increasingly exaggerated connections and coincidences are bound to be touted as fact. Is there a grain of truth somewhere in the theory? Given that four of the 44 U.S. presidents have been assassinated, the fatality rate seems surprisingly high. Yet political figures across the planet are inherently in dangerous positions, especially in times of domestic instability or financial upheaval. Assassinations, coup d'etat, and forced depositions are all too common in the turbulent world of international politics. And it's no secret that in the past, large private organizations have used their economic clout to change the state of a country's government. But does this still happen today? Skeptics maintain that the Kennedy and Lincoln assassinations, like those of most world leaders, were not orchestrated by any international banking cartel. The sheer level of organization and secrecy required would make the task impossible. But to conspiracy theorists, there's only one important question. Who's next?
In 1832, President Andrew Jackson destroyed the second central bank of the United States. In 1835, he reduced the national debt to the lowest in United States history. The bold effort the present bank had made to control the government are but premonitions of the fate that await the American people should they be deluded into a perpetuation of this institution or the establishment of another like it. Within three years of abolishing the second central bank, on January the 30th, 1835, President Andrew Jackson was attempted to be assassinated. Jackson was later asked what he considered to be the greatest achievement of his career. He replied, I killed the bank. During the American Civil War, Lincoln bypassed the high interest loans offered by the European bankers. In 1862, he issued debt-free notes called greenbacks to pay the costs of the Civil War. The government should create, issue and circulate all the currency and credit needed to satisfy the spending power of the government and the buying power of consumers. The privilege of creating and issuing money is not only the supreme prerogative of government, but is the government's greatest creative opportunity. By the adoption of these principles, the taxpayers will be saved immense sums of interest. Money will cease to be the master and become the servant of humanity. Democracy will rise superior to the money power. Before completion of his second term as president, on April 14, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. As the newly elected United States president, Garfield was publicly open about his views on the banking system. Whosoever controls the volume of money in any country is absolute master of all industry and commerce. And when you realize that the entire system is very easily controlled, one way or another, by a few powerful men at the top, you will not have to be told how periods of inflation and depression originate. Within a few weeks of making this statement, on September 19, 1881, President James Garfield was assassinated. As a former bank president, McFadden understood the banking system intimately. In 1929, the stock market crashed and the Great Depression began. McFadden blamed the Federal Reserve for causing the crash and fueling the depression. In 1932, McFadden moved to induce charges against the Federal Reserve Board. We have in this country one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. I refer to the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Banks. This evil institution has impoverished and ruined the people of the United States and has practically bankrupted our government. This is an era of economic misery. And for the conditions that caused that misery, the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Banks are fully liable. Following two unsuccessful assassination attempts, on October the 3rd, 1936, Lewis McFadden was assassinated. Kennedy reduced the Federal Reserve's monopoly of the US money supply. On June 4, 1963, he signed Executive Order 11110. This granted United States notes backed by silver reserves to be issued by the Treasury Department. Within five months, $4.3 billion of debt-free notes were issued. Then on November 22nd of the same year, President JFK was assassinated. Following his assassination, the US notes were removed from circulation powerful warning had been delivered to future presidents. Did these brave men die for nothing? We need to ask ourselves how much more blood needs to be spilt to end this system of financial slavery. We can no longer rely on our elected leaders to bring about the changes we need without our influence. We the people must act. 
We must unite and make our voices heard.